is revealed in her second son. Because once you understand why your husband loves you, I'm not talking about the gentleman that you went to the altar with. I'm talking about your first husband. I'm talking about the Lord God Almighty who has covenanted himself to you in marriage. And he says, the way that I reveal my love to Israel is by marrying Israel. I make, I make a marriage covenant with this, with this nation. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. He says, I betrothed you to me with five wedding rings. I betrothed you to me in faithfulness. I betrothed you to me in mercy. I betrothed you to me in judgment. I betrothed you to me in loving kindness. I betrothed you to me forever. Somebody praise him right now. Second phase of praise. The Bible says that the second phase of praise we can learn from Leah conveys the character of God. You know, there's something about the character of God. If your praise is void of telling God who he is, then there's something missing in your praise. You need to birth a new phase of praise. You need to convey the character of God. You need to show. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When was the last time you told the Lord how good he was? When was the last time you gave thanks for something that he did? When was the last time you conveyed the character of God in your praise? Genesis 29, 33 says, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord hath heard that I was hated. Notice how it's always in the midst of her pain that she's praising. Touch your neighbor and say, when was the last time you praised in your pain? I didn't get a whole lot of amens out of that one. Because the Lord heard I was hated. Reflects. Now watch this. It reflects and perfects the goodness of God from her mouth. She is reflecting and perfecting something about the nature of God because the Lord heard I was hated. The Bible says in Psalm 105 verse 1, make known his deeds among the people. The Bible says in the last line of verse 33, and she called his name Shimon, which is taken from the Hebrew word Shema. Say Shema which means to hear. In other words, she says, I'm going to go into a new phase of praise because I know the Lord hears me. I know the Lord understands me. There's something about God. I don't even have to make a sentence. He understands the groanings of my being. There's something about the Almighty. He's ever merciful. The Lord hath heard me and looked upon my affliction. Even though I can't see it, even though he's still sleeping in the tent with Rachel, it doesn't matter at all. I'm still going to praise him. I'm going to give him a yet praise. Somebody say it's a time for a yet praise. Touch your neighbor and say, when was the last time you offered him a yet praise? A yet praise. The Bible says in Psalm 42, David was mourning. He was in affliction. And he said, why do I go about mourning in my soul? He said, but yet shall I praise him. The Bible says in Psalm 71, when he was old and gray-headed, he was fighting a war with his own son Absalom. Old and gray-headed, feeling in his flesh that he was a little forsaken, but saying, yet, yet, yet. him more and more David said touch your neighbor and say yet I'm gonna give him a yet praise somebody praise him right now and give God the glory one more and I'm gonna quit third son third son he's still not with her prophetess he's not sleeping with her 